Welcome fellow horror hounds and welcome to the latest episode of Talk and Stalk, your unholy home for horror. I'm your host as always, Barry, and today's podcast, I'm just going to be giving a mini review on The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. Now, this movie I actually went to see last night at the cinema. Obviously, originally this film was scheduled for, I believe it was a September the 11th release date last year. Obviously, the film got uh, massively pushed back for, for obvious reasons. And uh, yeah, went to see this last night. Now, you know, The Conjuring and Conjuring 2, I liked them. You know, I, I thought they were good films. At the end of the day, it's formulaic horror. You know, these movies don't really set out to do anything new. Uh, you know, when the first Conjuring came out in 2013, I thought it was a good film. You know, it, it's obviously the first two were directed by James Wan. James Wan clearly has kind of an, an astute knowledge of horror, if you will. It's basically like he takes all of the conventions that we know and kind of puts them into one movie. Um, you know, these movies admittedly are quite reliant on jump scares and that. And obviously the Conjuring universe, it's, well, that's the thing, it's a shared universe now. We've had three Annabelle films, a nun movie, The Curse of La Lorena. And yeah, this is the third Conjuring film. And this is the, uh, what would it be? The third, fourth, fifth, eighth movie, I believe. Eighth movie in this shared universe. Um, so going into this film, I kind of knew what to expect. Um, you know, as I said, this was the first of the three to not be directed by James Wan. Um, and, you know, as I said before, can, you know, they're formulaic. These movies, I think that James Wan does know how to create scenes of genuine suspense, certainly. Um, at the same time, I feel like this, this whole franchise has become very reliant on that. Um, you know, you're expecting jump scares every three or four minutes or whatever. And I'm all for jump scares. You know, if they're used sparingly, I don't like jump scares for the sake of jump scares. I do feel like the horror genre has become incredibly over-reliant on such techniques. Um, but if executed correctly, I'm all for jump scares. Um, but admittedly, I thought Conjuring 2 was a good sequel. Not as good as the first. I think the film ultimately tried to do a little bit too much, tried to cram way too much in there. And over, you know, over two hours, I think it was around about two hours, 10 minutes long. It could be said that maybe the movie was a little bit too long as well. Um, so I'll admit, I went into this film not overly excited, in all honesty. Um, and I'll be honest, I walked out and I thought, it was okay. You know, this film was okay. It, it, it pretty much gave me what I expected it to give me. Um, you know, this film was directed by, uh, his name is actually escaping me. I believe it's Michael Chives. He actually directed The Curse of La Lorena, which to me is arguably the weakest film in the entire franchise. Um, that or The Nun are kind of jostling for the bottom spot, and I really wouldn't put Annabelle very much above that. Um, so yeah, again, that was a film that, I mean, these films have a definite polish to them, certainly. They look good, they're kind of well put together in that, if you will. Um, but it has become the kind of cliche now that, you know, we're eight movies into this franchise, it's kind of like we've come to know what to expect. Uh, like with The Nun, I mean, The Nun took no time in getting to the jump scares. Within Literally, there's a jump scare within the first three minutes of the movie, and they literally happen like every three or four minutes of the film. And the thing is, you see 99.9% .9 of them come in. Now, I'm just going to say this. To me, what elevates the Conjuring films above, you know, average and that, if you will, um is the way they're crafted to a certain degree, but mainly uh, the chemistry, the on-screen chemistry, which to me is almost undeniable between Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson. Uh, they're two actors that I really do like, and I think their chemistry is great. And there's a real likability to these two characters as well. Now, I'm not gonna go too much off topic here, but from what I understand, you know, may she rest in peace, Lorraine Warren, um, they, I, I believe they were hoaxes, okay? Um, 
I don't believe I'm very skeptical about this whole kind of paranormal, you know, the, these films. One of the big selling points for these movies, obviously, is that they're based on real events, blah, blah. But needless to say, there are many, many liberties taken within these films. There's many liberties taken at the end of the day for an entertainment perspective to try and make these films as entertaining as possible. Um, so with the Warrens themselves, I'm not overly familiar with them as people. Um, but what I do understand is I, I do believe they have been debunked. Um, but so I try and treat these Conjuring films as fiction, if you will. I just try and treat them as horror movies. And I think the two characters are great. I think they've got great on-screen chemistry. And as I said, to me, it is one of the, one of the franchise's selling points. Uh, now, this is a demonic possession movie. Um, I'll admit, I saw the first trailer. Yeah, it looked okay. Wasn't overly excited for it. Um, I think this film actually had a kind of strong opening to it. I thought the opening to this film was quite good. You know, it's a demonic possession film, so all of the tropes were there. Distorted bodies. I think there was some speaking of Latin, or at least some mention of speaking of Latin and so forth. Um, and, uh, you know, again, it was a film that there were certainly moments that had some you know keep you're waiting for the jump scare basically it's the anticipation of the jump scare there are some well-crafted set pieces during the course of the film um now admittedly i think the film does kind of get to the point where it starts to really kind of plod along um certainly in kind of the middle to final act um, it gets to the point where you're watching it and you think to yourself, they must be taking so much liberties there because they're throwing so much stuff into this movie. It kind of starts off as demonic possession. And then, of course, the story kind of slightly arcs off from that, you know, slightly expands. It, it moves into not a completely different direction, but, you know, the story expands. And um, but I thought the opening was good. Now, <laughs> there's actually a definite nod a definite homage here to a classic horror movie from 1973. Needs no introduction whatsoever. I'm not going to go into any spoilers for this for this review. Um, yeah, from from the shot, there's a shot very early on in this movie that is a definite homage nod, if you will, to a classic horror film from 1973. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'll admit now this movie didn't make me jump. It certainly tries to. It certainly, you know, and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that probably found this film scary. There's probably a lot of people out there that did jump a lot. I know my fiance actually jumped a few times and that. Um, but all in all, I thought <sighs> the problem is now we're eight films into this franchise, and it's it's kind of like you you've come to know what to expect now. Um, you know, that's the thing. And uh you know, sometimes I feel like there are jump scares there purely for the sake of jump scares and whatever, some of which are well executed. Um, but I know James Wan, now James Wan didn't direct this, as I said, James Wan produced it. Um, but I know that he has his critics. Um, I don't really have a big problem with James Wan myself. Um, I don't. At the end of the day, I'm not going to say that I think The Conjuring is one of the best horror movies of all time or anything like that. It's not. Not in my opinion. But I do like it. I do like it. I do think it's quite a well-made horror movie for what it is. It doesn't try to be anything different. It's basically, in a way, kind of an ode to old school horror with James Wan throwing as many techniques as he knows, etc. to try and make the best horror film he can. Um, and for the most part, I think it works to a degree. Um, as I said, Conjuring. Now, this movie was probably my least favourite of the three. Um, I didn't hate this film. I really didn't hate it. Um, at the same time, it's not a movie that I'm going to be really talking about for years to come or anything like that. It just is what it is. Um, you know, I think generally speaking, the casting, the casting was good. Um, I particularly, you know, the little boy, the little boy that's demonically possessed very early on in the film um, is suitably quite creepy. Now, obviously, there's CG moments here and there. There's definitely some moments that are like purely there for the jump scares. There's some moments in this where I did actually think it was veering to silliness. There's actually moments where I thought to myself, this is getting really nonsensical now. I think it started off quite solid. 
And I know it's actually based on a real life case of apparently a demonic possession. Um, you know, uh, the first in US history, I believe, of somebody actually claiming that he committed a murder under demonic possession. But obviously they took a lot of liberties with the story for the purpose of this movie and that. Um, so I kind of like the concept going into this film. I like the whole idea of it. You know, demonic possession films are a dime a dozen, certainly. You know, there's so many out there. There's some really good ones and there's some really bad ones. To me, this is kind of middle of the range. This is kind of mid range. This isn't one of the worst horror demonic possession films of all time or anything like that. By no means, by no means. Um, but yeah, at the same time, like I said, it, it, it does become, um, I don't know, sometimes I feel like it's trying to be a little bit too clever for its own good or whatever. Um, I kind of liked it when it was the sole focus of this demonic possession. And uh, as I said, there are some set pieces that I think generally work. Um, but, you know, it's a Jane Wan, James Wan production. It's part of the Conjuring universe. You know, um, as I said, there's nothing really in there that's like, wow, this is different. I haven't seen this before or, you know. Um, so now I do believe they're doing a Nun 2. I believe this universe is going on. I have no interest in the Nun 2. The Nun, I thought, was a pretty, pretty bad film. Um, I preferred this to the Nun. So if I was to rank this movie... I was to rank this um i would actually put this just above annabelle um but below the conjuring 2 i'd kind of put this almost on par maybe just under uh, annabelle creation um kind of around that around that kind of range um i think it's worth a watch certainly um but at the same time you know as i said vera famiga and patrick wilson are a selling point for me. I really do love when them two are actually on screen together. I do believe the relationship that they have, um, you know, but it just, it was an okay film. I mean, it was good to see, like, it did feel like the film was getting, it felt like the film was longer than what it was at, on occasion. Maybe that's because I went to a late night show and I was getting quite tired. I think the film wasn't too far off two hours. So it was about 15 to 20 minutes short than Conjuring 2. It did feel quite long in places, um, but overall, I thought the devil made me do it. It's okay. I mean, I'd probably give it, if I was to give it like a star system or something like that, I'd probably give it around two, two and a half stars, kind of an average. Um, so yeah, uh, that's pretty much all I really wanted to talk about uh, regarding this. As I said, I went into this film with pretty low expectations and it kind of gave me what I expected it to give me. Um, I think it's generally well made. I, I, I just I, I just don't like it sometimes when these movies, they try to do a little bit too much and it, it gets to the point where it just becomes kind of completely nonsensical. I realise they're trying to make up for the runtime. They're trying to fit as much in as they can. But uh, yeah, so uh, that's it for today. Thanks a lot to everyone that listened and I will be back again soon to haunt you and torment you. Take care.